You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping Raw from October 2nd. Yeah, so this is a pretty good show. I agree. Yeah, solid from top to bottom. Yes, a lot of things going on, which is not very common for Raw. Yeah. But this is one of those nice points in time where nothing's established yet Mm -hmm. or nothing's solid yet and every storyline pretty much is up in the air which is funny because they have what three weeks to go until yeah it's like the 20 dlc second yeah something like that so but but, you know it this is a comfortable amount of time right to to have in order to build stories well all right so yeah i figure three weeks left Mm -hmm. we don't have any matches you know set in stone yet um no, yeah i guess not this isn't like we're smackdown for hell in a cell where we kind of knew what was going on immediately three weeks. afterwards yeah. because yeah. everything's just a rematch of SummerSlam. yeah ba- basically <laughs> yeah. um yeah the only thing that's different with them is the women's match yeah oh yeah yeah that is set yeah yeah right no 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 i'm, no, I'm, t- oh, I'm not talking oh, about the raw women's right, match. I gotcha. that one's for, not established yeah. yet mm-hmm Oh, actually, it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they made it official this week. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we kind of. I'm assuming. Actually, I have an idea when we get when we get to it. All right. But so, yeah, let's not, let's get started because yeah, it comes yeah. up pretty. Maybe not pretty quickly, but eventually. All right. Well, let's 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 talk about it. All right. So um, the show starts with uh, the moment of silence for the tragic, I guess shooting at in las vegas mm-hmm. i guess that's what yeah. you would classify that's, it as yeah that's kind of cut and dry there yeah so but uh so yeah so we had the moment of silence and uh shane mcmahon was there it's a little weird why why was that weird he's always there yeah i know but he uh stephanie wasn't on smackdown are we sure we just didn't see her uh, it's possible i wasn't really looking i really only noticed that vince was there yeah which was strange. Fair I enough. I think Vince would be at SmackDown because he doesn't know about it. <laughs> Wait, Wait we second. have a second show? <laughs> I thought I thought I canceled that 10 years ago. Damn it. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, they after that, they showed a recap mm-hmm. of um, what happened between The Miz and Roman Reigns the week before. Yep, setting up the Intercontinental title match for tonight. Yes. Last night, two nights ago, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so... Um, so yeah, they like I said played with uh, Rand's getting beat up with the chair and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so next we start off the actual show with um, uh, Seth Rollins coming out for his match against Braun Strowman. Yeah, strong way to open the show. Yeah, and uh, apparently we discovered at this point that Michael Cole wasn't there. Well, I actually knew he wasn't going to be there. Okay, well the viewing audience discovered oh. that. Michael All right. Well, Cole you said there. we. I didn't know if you meant the viewing audience. Me and you, the audience. No, I had no idea. Oh yeah, his son apparently got married. Oh. He gets married on a Monday. The Coles. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> if that is his real name. It's true. Um. So Tom Phillips was there to replace him. Mm-hmm. A solid choice. Yeah. The only problem was Booker T was still there. <laughs> I'm telling him, holding out for that uh, announced team of Michael Cole, David Otunga, and Booker T. It's going to happen one day. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> they know better. That'll be they, the, might, uh, they might not. That'll be in the dark days of 205 Live. I guess it'll always be the dark days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although, man, I, I watched 205 Live from last night, and it seemed oh, like you? the fans were actually quite into it. Yeah, that's what I heard. I didn't um, watch it yet. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, back to the match. Yeah. Braun Strowman against Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seth immediately tries to go after Strowman because he understands that if he doesn't take him out right away, yeah. he's going to get killed. Yeah, and then what? Strowman went for a power slam pretty quickly, mm-hmm. right? And but he was able to... Wiggle his way out. Yeah. He sla- tried to slap him <laughs> in the face. Yeah, Bro <laughs> goes, what are you, stupid? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, man, good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Seth Rollins goes for a suicide dive and he just gets clocked in the face. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. I mean, he hit what a blockbuster after that, right? Well, yeah, this this was well, that was outside bit, the ring, bit, yeah. Yeah, this is a little bit later. Rollins is able to get some momentum, hits a blockbuster, yeah, goes for a cover, and then he does Someone that thing where he them. just throws bodies around. And he ends up going <laughs> halfway across the ring. Um, but I mean, you know, Rollins put up a decent fight, which we expected. Well, yeah, they yeah. they 
They want to build up Strowman by having him go against like legitimate people mm-hmm. now. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Yeah, because obviously Reigns is legitimate, but at the same time you're kind of booking him on even footing with Strowman. Strowman yeah. So it's hard to. And I guess they're gonna have to build, you know, book him higher than the other two members of the Shyeld. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, eventually, uh, Rollins gets hit with, hit with one running power slam mm-hmm. and gets pinned. That's it. And then after the match, Braun hits a second one. Yes. Does he leave the ring and then go back or? Yeah, he, yeah. well, what he does is he goes down, starts walking up the ramp, turns mm-hmm. around and then. Yeah. Comes back. And yeah. Goes for a third one, but Seth's partner, Dean Ambrose comes out mm-hmm. and then Braun decides to beat him up. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, he's he's more fresh meat. Mm-hmm. Then he hits him with a running power slam, and Braun exits the ring and heading up the ramp, and the bar yeah. comes out. It was funny because he was walking up the ramp. He gets to the top, and Sheamus and Cesaro kind of just scurry around past them, mm-hmm. like trying to avoid him. And then they both hit, um, I guess, I don't remember who hit, but someone got hit with the neutralizer, and the other mm-hmm. one got hit with the bro kick. Yeah. Uh, so... But and then uh, good good yeah. way to start the show. Yeah, it's true. And uh, I'm glad you know they're continuing the bar Seth and Dean storyline, but adding other elements into it. So it, it seems like they're trying to just in general mix things up a little more. Mm-hmm. I guess they're realizing that just doing the same story over and over again can make it stale. Oh yeah, like SmackDown does. And um, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, this way, it keeps uh, keeps it fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, up next, we have a backstage segment with uh, Mickey James walking backstage, and she uh, bumps into uh, Alicia Fox and Emma. Yeah, well, it or, was Alicia, Alicia Fox, Fox first, first and right. she was giggling. Mm-hmm. And then she sees Emma, and Emma says, you have a secret admirer. And uh, or she said there was something left in your she, dressing room, Someone right? left you a present. Present, that's what it was. So she goes into her dressing room, opens it up, and there's a box of Depends with a ribbon on it, and uh, I think a walker as well, a couple other things. Yeah. So uh, it's not very nice. No. So she she heads to uh, Alexa Bliss's locker room. She slams on you know slams on the door, and uh, Nia Jax opens it up. Mm-hmm. And so apparently they're friends again. Yeah, this is weird. Frenemies. Yeah, that's just well, the storyline. They said that word a lot. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah. I tune out. Well, you know. Um, Got my own stories going on up here. I guess that's true. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, Nia oh, Jax answers. Mention what? That's uh, just that's just funny. Um, so every Braun Strowman match is always some something of the same. A nipple pops out. Oh, <laughs> you always have to look for the nipple. <laughs> <sighs> it's too funny. And then he rips it down. Well, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um. Alexa steps up, steps out from behind Naya, mm-hmm. and says that I'm. I don't feel right. It doesn't feel right to beat up an old lady. <laughs> um, but she, she, Nia Jax has no problem do, doing yeah. it. So, uh, so I guess we're gonna have Nia Jax versus uh, Mickey James later on. Yes, that's what we would think. Yeah. Oh, then we get to see your boy uh, Bray Wyatt. A little weird, rocking in a chair, but different to himself. Yeah, it, it, it was, was creepy. Yeah, it was creepy, Which and is, it was good. Yeah. So, um, which was is he, not something you get from him. This was kind of like a continuation of a promo he had a while back with the whole was it the deer or something with the arrow. Because I thought he was saying something about she said this and that. I don't know if it was the, he was referring to the same person or... Well, it's Sister Abigail he's referring to. Well, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. Well, it was obvious to begin with. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the she he always talks right, about. Right, right. But I didn't know if it... Maybe this was a promo from last week I was thinking about. I don't know. Mm. Or two weeks ago. Are you talking about when he was... Ta- like, he killed the dog yeah, or Yeah, the something? deer or something, or the animal. That was and a I, few weeks ago. Yeah, and then he brought it back up in another promo. I don't, I don't know if it was this week or last week. I um, bringing that up again. All right, fair enough. But this was all of him saying she she lied... Uh, he, he lied to me. She wouldn't lie to me. Mm-hmm. He lied to me. She wouldn't lie to me. Over and over again. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Yep. And then... Uh, up next, we had Elias Samson. Well, no, sorry, Elias. Yeah, it's just Elias. Versus Titus O'Neil. And this I don't was... know why they got rid of the Drifter. I don't know. It's weird, because yeah. it makes sense. Right. They, yeah, they should have just kept him the Drifter. Yeah, and even... need to Elias Samson, just yeah. the Drifter. Yeah, that would make more sense. Mm-hmm. In his hobo ways. Yes. Um, you know, homeless Seth Rollins. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so this is a pretty quick match. Not really surprising the outcome here. Well, uh, did we say it was against Titus O'Neil? I think I said Titus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. after what happened last week, right, when he attacked Titus yeah, after it, the match, right? Yeah, it was pretty much this match ended this or went the same way where Elias was getting or was trying to bother was, the person not in the yeah, match. Yeah, he was outside the ring, and uh, Apollo's kind of... You, you would expect at this point for the person outside the ring to attack. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Titus was talking to the referee or something like that. The referee was holding them back, and at, Elias was outside with uh, Apollo, and uh, I guess they were kind of just getting in each other's face, right? Yeah. And then... Uh, Titus went and he leaned grew, over the ropes yeah, to he, grab Elias, and Elias pulled him down. Well, he hit his neck on the top rope. He went in, hit drift away, and that was all. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's it. Yeah, not not much else going on here. Yeah, I think this is, uh, okay, we we don't know what to do with Elias. So well, that's, yeah, the thing, you can't really, it's hard to put him in a long-term feud. Especially because they probably want to build him pretty strong. Yeah. I mean, but they don't want to waste people on him. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that's that's the problem. So you don't he, have a lot of lower level yeah. talent to just throw around. He he want they want him to be like an upper mid Carter, mm-hmm. but they don't want him to be with the rest of them. Right. Or they don't want to like, drop. Why is this guy beating up you know Seth Rollins yeah. or something like that? They don't want that. So it's it's a it's a tough road for him. Yeah, it, it's. That's what's all going to be a hard problem with anybody they call up from NXT that's not a superstar yeah, or, or yeah. a big name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, you like know, Joe like, Balor, right? Because um, I mean, you kind of well, Corbin would have been fine, and then he went and screwed it all up. So, talking about concussions, how, how that, dare he? That and everything else. Well, I know, but that was <laughs> I think the big thing. That was the big thing. Yes. Um. What else? All right. So after that. Mm-hmm. We had Mickey James versus Nia Jax, yeah. which came up pretty quickly, actually. Yeah, this, they gave this match a decent amount of time too. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a good, good match. It was a match where Mickey James was actually able to do things, as opposed to her normal matches where she usually just loses. Mm-hmm. Um, so the commentators actually made a lot of references to her age, mm. Mickey's, of course, um, which was weird. Like I guess that's what they're going after, but. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mickey James is a trooper because she put up with a lot of um, them being, or she, like, because, like, when she feuded with uh, Lay Cool mm-hmm. back in the late 2000s, they used to call her fat all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was um, it? Uh, the the Piggy, Piggy James. Piggy James, that's yes. what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now they're, she's letting them do this. It's, she's mm-hmm. uh, certainly a trooper. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, things have changed, too. I mean, 38 in wrestling is not that old anymore. Well, that is true. Yeah. No, I know. I'm for, just for women, it seems like the average age is much lower than men. Unless you're Fabio Smula or <laughs> now, because she was like fifty, like in the eighties, mm-hmm. wasn't she? Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like you said, this is a good match. Yeah. Um, Mickey I mean, was able to hit a tornado DDT off the top rope. Yeah, this did not look very pretty. No, I don't know if it was the camera it angle was the or what. Yeah, she landed like I think she like kicked Nia in the head as she was landing, or kneed her in the head. Yeah, and um, Nia went down, and Mickey went for the cover, and Alexa popped into the ring and broke kinda, up the cover. Yeah, that, that was it. Yep, and that was a DQ. Mm-hmm. So Mickey um, James gets the win. Mm-hmm. And was it after the match? Mickey went was outside or was Alexa? Well, Alexa outside? threw Mickey out of the ring. That's what it was. And then okay. she tried to wake up. She was Naya. playing possum. Yeah. yeah. And then she went out to take care of Mickey herself. That's what Mickey it was. jumped up, hit her with the mid kick, and that was it. And then I think yeah, she grabbed the microphone. Did she? Or she oh just no no no, she was just oh yeah, yeah, she was just yelling, yeah. and she said that she wants her seventh seven. title. Yeah. Um. So I guess well later on, they'll yeah yeah, yeah. get into that. Mm-hmm. But, um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a recap of the Cruiserweight segment that finished the show last week. Yeah, and then they showed what happened off-air with mm-hmm. Braun Strowman. Yeah, who's this, Renee that, right? Yeah, Renee was in, and then Enzo comes in, Renee interviews him and asks him what what happened, or, oh, just about, the, yeah, the, the division hating him yeah. and everything that transpired, and mm-hmm. he kind of just had this dead look behind the eyes, staring, and that was it. Yeah, this was strange, because... Going out of 205 Live from last week, 
Enzo was just beating up mm -hmm. Davari and um No, I thought no, no, it wasn't him Divari. and Davari were together. Was, yeah. Well, yeah. Beating up Neville. He beating up Neville with yeah. his uh crutch. And I mean, how many segments do you ever get where Enzo isn't running his mouth? It's true. But it's just odd that he went from like being the aggressor to being like you saw a ghost. So had this been the interview on 205 last week before he beat down Neville, it would have made more sense. Yes. Because it was right after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, because yeah, I'm like... Because mm -hmm. I had just watched 205 Live before we <laughs> Okay, yeah. And um, I'm thinking back, I'm like, I could have swore that he wasn't like this mm -hmm. at the end of 205 Live. I'm like, did... Are they considering 205 Live not canon? <laughs> You're not supposed to be watching 205 Live. Is that what's live. going on now? Yeah, that was weird. So that that caught, uh, caught me as uh, yeah. unexpected. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. What are you going to do? It does get, well, it doesn't get fixed, mm. but they do. He does change his attitude later on in the night. So. Right, yeah. Um. So up next, there's a, uh, Charlie congratulates mickey james no, that was her. ivory in uh right to censor years she had the the tie and the oh white you're, shirt. Okay, you're saying that charlie <laughs> looked like her okay i'm like what are you talking about i was like that's a weird uh outfit to wear you know they got to stand out somehow i guess so um but it congratulates mickey on her win mm -hmm. and uh then mickey says that she wants to be the next or she wants to be the next raw women's champion yeah yeah she wants to represent the women of raw yeah and then angle comes over and says that sent you with your impressive I have good match, news mickey yeah with your win-loss record you're allowed <laughs> to uh get a title shot yeah so she gets the title shot at tlc yeah so that's a little different what that they're actually giving her a title shot well i guess so but you know she certainly deserves it yeah so all right so we have no idea how Asuka is going to impact TLC, right? I wouldn't be particularly particularly surprised if the Monday before mm -hmm. she appears or, like, something happens and she, like, mm -hmm. shows up on the screen. She'll probably go out and just beat up Emma. <laughs> well, probably not, but it would be just she appears and then she just gets put in the match. Yeah. It's a triple threat match. That's when the reign of Asuka starts. It's possible. Yeah. Um, or she'll just attack Alexa when she wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just going to be very interesting to see how they bring her in. Because mm -hmm. this is kind of... Because they've already announced that she's going to premiere or debut. Right. So what they might do is just say that she's going to have a match. Yeah. And just pick, like, Alicia Fox. Yeah, or something her. like that. Yeah. Which is weird to do mm -hmm. on a pay-per-view, but whatever. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, I think Alicia Fox was on, what, Lillian Garcia's podcast or something like that, saying that she was kind of embarrassed of her career in WWE, uh, just because... Hasn't you know, been particularly eventful. No. Yeah. And she's used to be annoying, so... Yeah. Or is, that's her gimmick, mm -hmm. is annoying. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yes. So up next, we have, uh, I guess, the new tag team in town. The new Hardy Brothers. Yeah. Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan yeah. teaming up together against the club. Oh man, um, <laughs> love me some club. I I Good like brothers. I like how this match came about though, because <laughs> they they showed I guess a WWE.com exclusive. Was that with them and Mike Rome? Was Mike Rome no, interviewing them? No. Oh okay, they were just hanging out in the locker room. All right, that was something okay. different. It I was, saw that after. It was the two teams. And oh uh, yeah yeah okay now I remember. And this. Uh, and the Gallows just for some reason just. <laughs> Said something about, like, uh, you guys stink and you're a bunch of nerds. And that was it. There's really nothing to it. It's and, pretty funny. Yeah, we, we make matches out of nothing. Yeah, it's true. Well, you know, you know, they just make up the matches to begin That's with. True. So it's it's nice when they at least come that, up with some kind of enough. reason behind that it. Is, that is true. Um, so, uh... But yeah, this was a decent match. <laughs> yeah, um, this is funny. A surprising ending. Well, yeah. Um... Man, this just Jason Jordan. It's just it's so bland. It's true. It's bad. Like I, I don't know how they his inter entrance music is terrible. It's true. it's awful. It is true. And I, I just uh, I mean they're just gonna give him the Roman treatment. I mean just keep putting him with people trying to get him over. Mm, I guess I don't know. They really haven't been doing a lot for him though. Yeah, because they're putting him with 
They're putting them with people that are already over, which makes it hard because you just stand out at that point. Right, because they're just going to chant for the people that are over. They don't care about them. Yeah. They just care about Matt and delete chants. Yeah, exactly. But she did cut his hair shorter. Who? Matt, I think. Oh, well, you know, his hair was really long to begin with, so. No, but I think he was styling it differently, more like the broken Matt. Uh, Oh. But yeah, basically what happens. That's what should break Matt jason jordan's dullness yeah <laughs> i can't take it anymore he was with the charismatic enigma and now he's the uh the guy with no charisma it's true um but yeah what happens is uh at the end of the match jason jordan tries to take out uh carl anderson on the outside mm-hmm. but anderson's able to uh to they guess, throw reverse, him, reverse it. it and throw him into the yeah, barricade th- and which takes out jj um anderson runs into the ring uh, I guess he tags Gallows. Yeah. Um, no, no, well, no. Gallows was the legal man at the time. Then he tagged Anderson. Anderson got the. That's pain. what I mean. Oh, I thought you said. T- oh, he tagged. Yeah, Gallows. Anderson. Okay, yeah, yeah. Came up and tagged. I got gotcha. you. They hit the uh, Magic Killer. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carl and- Anderson was on the winning side this time. Yeah, he didn't eat he a pin in a match he was in. I know. It's a big surprise. Yeah. It's ninety percent of the time. Yep. Um, but I mean, it makes sense for the established tag team to win over win the over. unestablished yes. tag team, unless it's against the Mistrash. Well, you know, they're technically <laughs> not. Well, they are, I guess, a, yeah. a tag team, but they're not in the tag team division. That's true. At least I guess not. I don't know. Who the yeah. hell knows? They they make up things anyway. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. D- Dash Wilder's still wrestling uh, Heath Slater and Rhino on main event. Well, you know. <laughs> oh man. So uh, up next, Roman Reigns was who was interviewed by Renee, I think. Um, I think, or was it Charlie again? It was probably Renee. Yeah, about what happened to Dean and Seth earlier on, and he said, you know, the bar's just trying to make a statement. And then he's asked about his match, and he says he's gonna break the Miz's <laughs> jaw and win the title. He's not leaving. Where were they? Colorado. Colorado without, without my title. Yeah. Without the, the IC title. Mm-hmm. And they, for some reason, made a big stink about how he's never gotten that title before. Yeah. He's never had an Intercontinental title match before. Probably not. No, well, I'm just saying, like, why? Why? If, if you obviously have no interest in going after said title, mm-hmm. why is it a big deal if you never had said title? You skipped over it. What's it matter? It's true. So, it's like, I've never been the Cruiserweight champion. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get to that. What, what, Roman's going to be the Cruiserweight title mm-hmm. uh, champion? He's gonna, no, he's just going to be the title. They're going to have to wear him around the waist. He'll be purple. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we had the, uh, was it Susan G. Komen? Right? Yes, with the uh, Breast Foundation. Cancer Awareness yeah. Month, and they did the, uh, the women's, the giveaway of the commemorative. It's not really a giveaway, well, but they... Giving the titles to the yeah. survivors of breast cancer. And they have, uh, I guess, commemorative belts yeah. that they give. And all the uh, female wrestlers were uh, in the ring wearing, I don't remember what the shirts say. Oh, it was the warrior or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think it says, like, embrace the warrior yeah. or something. Yeah, I think that was something, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Good idea. Not the greatest company. Yeah. Also, you're breaking kayfabe. Oh, yeah. Have Mickey James in the same ring as Alexa <laughs> Bliss, and they're not beating each other what up. That makes no sense. This isn't storyline based. This is real life, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, you've heard of the whole thing with the Susan G. Komen Foundation and everything, I know right? something was up with them, Yeah, but well, what. you know when you donate to something and you're hoping that your money you donate actually There's... goes to the cause? It's paying people and stuff like mm-hmm. that, so it's one of those unfortunate things in WWE, you know. Well, they've been doing it for, for such a long time. So three can't years, really... I think? No, it's been longer than that, it? I think. Yeah. I think they started doing this belt thing a few years ago, yeah. but they've been working with them for much oh, longer. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Moving on. So uh, we uh, have the Mrs. Music hit, Mm -hmm. and then no one's coming from the ramp. And then the camera pans exactly where they come from in the stands, Mm -hmm. and the Miz Taraj comes down through the the stands like uh, the Shield used to do. How long did Roman do that after they broke up? It was a while, Too long. Yeah. Probably a good year. Yeah. Which is not a good year. (laughs) Yeah. That was when he did it for a very long time because I remember people saying that why is he still doing that? Mm -hmm. 
And it, I think it, that's when the hatred really started brewing. When he was still doing that yeah. stupid stuff. Yeah. Well, he kept the theme music. I mean, there's just so many things. That yeah, I think... Well, it's pretty much the same theme. It's it's the same music. It just doesn't start the no, same. But I mean, because he had the, uh, they had the the shield right, part yeah. at the beginning of it, but so, otherwise it's yeah, the same thing. Right. Um. So yeah, they Roman was out first or no? I think Roman was in the ring first, right? No. No, they came out through the crowd first. Yeah, and then because Roman comes I, out. I don't understand why they did it that way, but I yeah. remember remembering why would they have him come out first? Yeah, um, and then yeah, so Roman gets out of the ring and beats up both Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas with a chair. Yeah, I was going to say he didn't ramp. just beat them up; he yeah. destroyed them. Yeah, wow. Yeah, no, it's not hard, but. But yeah, he uh, he brought both of them. Well, he he chased Axel all mm. the way from inside the crowd, back around and up to the entrance of the stage, and then Dallas came over and attacked him, right. who was easily fort- forded, and uh, beat them both up with the chair. Yep. So they and the Miz hung- was looking on with horror. Yes, he he looked <laughs> concerned because obviously the Miz Taraj is the reason why he wins all the time. That's it. Um, but. But That's yeah. how you have to book a good heel. It's true. Um, Roman Unless then you're goes, Jinder Mahal. Yeah. R- Roman then uh, goes down to the ring, and it actually seemed like the fans were behind him. Well, yeah. It's definitely getting little, more and little, more. And I think, you know, the building of the shield, getting back together well, and stuff like that. certainly helps. Well, that's the whole reason of doing it. But Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, this was a decent match. Yeah. Uh, I, Roman I, started off with the on the offense for good little while but eventually the Miz the got Miz, back in yeah. yeah which was surprising because that's absolutely not how this match no. was supposed to be booked <laughs> he's really gotta get rid of those stupid it kicks they look so bad it's true but it's, it's such yeah. good heat i know i know it really is because it it's it's over like in a good way mm. when uh when it's someone that the fans don't like and it's it works for heat when it's someone that they do like. Mm. So, you know, it kind of right, works yeah, out. I guess so. so it's it's not necessarily a move that's supposed to look good. Cause obviously no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Roman's able to counter. With the same way he did, what, last week, right? I Picked guess. him up into a powerbomb, yeah. but he did a sit-out powerbomb this time. Yeah. Well, that's usually what he does when he powerbombs yeah. people. Um, but yeah, he, he hits the uh, sit-out powerbomb. Mm-hmm. And at this point, the fans start cheering some more, which surprised me a little bit. Um, hey, it's fine. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he hit, he hit, I think he hit a couple of Superman punches. Yeah, maybe one or two and then set up for the spear, right? Yeah. Oh, Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. No, he oh, he, right. he went for a Superman Man, punch it. and uh, the Miz, Miz countered it mm-hmm. and hit him with the skull fr- crush- crushing finale, but mm-hmm. Roman uh, kicks out. Yeah. Um, and then he hits Long another. Two. Sh- yeah. He hits another Superman punch, and then he's going for the spear. Right, and that's when the bar comes through the audience and grabs Roman by the legs and pulls him outside yeah, of the ring, then, causing a DQ. Yes. So this is a good way to. Uh, oh yeah. A good way to continue both stories, because mm-hmm. um, it he gets beat down by um, by the bar, mm. which is Seamus and Cesaro. I don't think we have said those names yet. <laughs> I know I know they call themselves the bar all the time, but I guess it couldn't hurt. Um. So. Uh, yeah, then they hit each of them hits their finishers, right? All on Roman yes. in the ring. And then they leave the ring. And then they go back. Yes. And then they hit the shield power bomb. Mm-hmm. And then they do the the fist bump, but they kinda go sideways with the thumbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so his fist was in the middle. Um this is where my idea came in. Alright, well before you, you get into this. All right, so they're putting the Miz into this, mm-hmm. and then you have Braun Strowman, who is both fighting Dean and Seth. Mm-hmm. I figured they would have done Braun in the Bar versus uh, the Shield. I don't think Braun has anything to do with this storyline. Yeah, just I beating think this people is, up. Yeah, I yeah. think this is just Braun finding or needing something to. But do. But then this is going to be another pay per view without an IC title match. No, that, I'm not done yet. Okay, well Here's that's my that idea. perfect because Here's that leads idea. right into it. So. And this probably won't happen, but mm-hmm. it'd be fantastic. Okay, The Miz has the IC title. He does. Seth and, Seth and Dean have the tag team titles. They do. Have a six-man team TLC match mm-hmm. where the winning side has gets the belts. 
Interesting. Yeah. I know it's way too busy. That's a lot. But it'd be cool. But who, so, all right, so what you're saying is if Seamus pin Dean, him and Cesaro will get the tag belts. TLC match. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> this way you have all three belts hanging mm-hmm. from the thing. Fair enough. It doesn't really matter. No. Um, but, you know, it'd be cool. It'd be something. You know Different. I mean? The only problem with that is that there's not a whole lot else going on on this pay-per-view. Yeah. Because you're Outside looking, of this, it's going to be... Yeah. Because you're looking at... Um, Finn and Finn Bray and again. Bray again. <laughs> no, it's going to be... The women's match. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, and then there's no universal title match. Mm-hmm. Um, there won't be a uh, separate of tag team and IC titles. There's the Cruiserweight match, so that's four. Yeah. And I, I guess maybe they'll find something for Braun to do, which would be five. Mm-hmm. So, they could do it, but, you know. Whatever. We can dream. I guess. All right. I guess. So. Let's, uh, let's move on. All right. From, from positive to negative. There you go. So, yeah, okay, from positive to negative. I was like, wait a second, this wasn't, this wasn't a positive. Then, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Finn Balor comes out and calls Bray Wyatt a coward and goes on and on and on. And he basically says he plays. He can play his games because he can't. He knows he can't beat me. Somebody comes up on the screen, and he talks about what Sister Abigail. Oh no! First he was talking about the demon, mm-hmm. and he said what the man. Oh, was that last week where he said that the man came up with the demon, so the man is the one to fear rather than the demon. Well, that's what uh, Baller said a few weeks ago. Was that a few weeks ago? Yeah. I get it was shy. I, um, I, it was before No Mercy, wasn't? It? So. Um, I thought he said something. Bray said something nah. about the. Nah. Well, Bray Bray said that um, you lied to me, mm-hmm. and that the the, oh, de- the, demon. the the paint has nothing to do with the demon. Mm-hmm. The demon's always inside of you. Oh, okay, so that's what it was. Now I have to uh, unleash my inner inner evil mm-hmm. or something like that, and um, and at that point Get when the, he said that the lighting changes and his face gets all yeah. Weird. So that was actually pretty cool. This is the first time, in my opinion. Do you know what the plan is? Uh, supposedly Sister Abigail is going to debut. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you know who Sister Abigail is? Well, from what I heard, it's a there's a lot of possibilities. Is it really dumb? Mm-hmm. It's Bray Wyatt. He's going to come out as Sister Abigail. Really? Yes, You're going to be dressed up as a woman? That's what I'm hearing. That sounds like it doesn't make any sense. Yep, but that's going to be his demon. Or although... His alter person, al- alter ego. Although, if done correctly, it might not be that bad because it could be someone who who is, like, possessing him. Right. That makes a lot more sense than having just somebody mm-hmm. with him. Right. You know what I mean? Because the idea, because, like, the demon mm-hmm. is possessing Finn right. Balor. Yeah. So if you have an evil entity like Sister... I, I, this sounds so dumb. <laughs> it, it really does. Um, <laughs> but if you have it, like, at least it makes sense at that point. Yeah. So. But... I guess we're not supposed Honestly, to. We're supposed to forget about the whole Randy Orton and the Ashes, Sister Abigail, and everything it like that. It doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> Christine watched it after the, the next day and was texting me about it. She's like, whose Ashes were they then? I said, oh, that was the Ashes of Dolph Ziggler's career. There you go. <laughs> but like I said, honestly, this might be better than having it be some random yeah, they were gonna female bring superstar. A, I think maybe Sage or something like that from NXT. or, uh, or She posted some weird thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, just just kill it already. Just why? Why are we Husky still getting this? Harris. Yeah. I mean, we want him back. Um, anyway. It would be better if, like, if he, like, controlled, like, Jason Jordan or something like that. Why? Took mind control, and then that turned into him breaking Matt Hardy or something like that. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't do anything that, between him and Matt. That, Even and then Joe's you can bring now. Finn into it too, yeah. and yeah, I don't know, Whatever. just something. Whatever. Let's 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 because move you're on. really really holding Finn back with this. Like I heard that they were gonna have, uh, I guess Finn was supposed to get a championship match at Survivor Series. Somebody was saying uh-huh. there was a rumor about that with him and Brock. Uh-huh. I, I can't see them doing that or it being a match that finn can possibly look good in well finn's not gonna win no obviously not but. um he could have a match though yeah there's still a month between tlc and yeah i, I know it's just how do you go from that this to that well 
I would imagine that Finn wins this match too. He, he better. Um, so at that point, hopefully, it completely kills the his Bray storyline. Right. And hopefully, at the same time, it lets Bray do something a little more interest, interesting with the it because he has something new. Yeah, I guess so. So, but who knows? Yeah. All right. Let's 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 move on. Okay. Future talk is for future. Yeah. Well, I didn't watch this match, so. Oh, the, the <laughs> Sasha and Bailey match? versus Emma and Alicia Fox. Now. Um, every time they team together, it feels like it's an opportunity for them to like to start splitting from yeah. each other. Well, again, there's talk about Bailey turning heel. Yeah. Um, at the uh, beginning of this match, you know how Bailey does her. her like running up oh, to the ropes. Oh yeah, I I, I saw the beginning and the ending. I didn't see yeah. the match, but yeah, um, I saw Sasha joined in and they yeah. went to each side. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but you know, so yeah. B- but yeah, they. Uh, I think I don't remember if we said, but they're up against uh, Emma and Alicia Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, f- uh, the Sasha and Bailey start off strong, and then at some point Emma is able to, I believe. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Start controlling over Sasha. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sasha eventually is able to fight back. And then she gets the hot tag to Bailey. Mm -hmm. Um, Bailey takes out Alicia Fox. Right. Um, Oh, and then the right, she went to go make the tag to Emma. And Emma just dropped down off the apron and started walking to the back. Yep. Bailey hits the Bailey Bailey to Bailey. Yes. Very uh, strange name. uh, Alicia Fox and gets the win. Yep. So no, no story progression. No, no. Well, the reason. Like, why this, did Emma walk out? That's really the only thing. But. Yeah, but the, any secondary women's storyline, there's just no thought process yeah. behind it. Let's it, throw stuff together and uh, send them out there. So I would imagine next week we get a backstage segment where Alicia's yelling mm-hmm. at Emma, asking her why she did yeah. it. So come up with a, some kind of explanation, mm-hmm. which will lead to Sasha or Bailey coming over and saying something to the contrary or whatever emma says and then yeah. we'll get at this tag team match again probably or some sort or of a, variation i was of gonna it. say in a yeah. or a singles match between mm-hmm. emma and bailey or emma it, and sasha it's always a women's segment before the main event right generally it's either that or a cruiserweight segment yeah. since the cruiserweight segment was the main event mm-hmm. it really so be. the reason they've been doing this is because their ratings have dropped or always drop in the third hour mm-hmm. so that's why they've been putting the main focus at the 10 o'clock hour and apparently last week they had the biggest drop off in I don't know how long, uh-huh. but yeah. After having uh, Seth, oh no, Dean and was it Dean, Dean and Stroman? Stroman? Yeah, or that was, was it, no, or was it Roman in the Miz? It was probably Roman in the Miz. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I'm okay with it. It's fine because I, I like these cruiserweight segments. Yeah, this was good. I mean, um, they could have done things a little differently, but the the only thing is that. Like, because you know that Raw is always going to run a little bit longer, mm-hmm. so you kind of feel like this is either going to be really drawn out or mm-hmm. something else is going right. to happen. And, I mean, last week and this week were both good. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes. from. All right. So uh, Enzo comes out to address the Cruiserweights. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently he's uh, not very happy with his situation. Yes. Um, Even though he put them in the main event last yeah, week. Yeah, it's true. He says it's not right that they don't like him just because... Uh, just because he does what he has to do different. to win. Um, and he uh, tells everybody that he has a new clause this mm. week. The clause that if he gets touched, whoever touches him will get fired. So, you it know. Sounded. I don't know why Kurt Angle keeps on signing these things. I don't know. So, yeah, the locker room comes out. And this is where I thought it could have been better. Um, locker room comes out. And they surround the ring. And Enzo runs down everybody. Mm-hmm. And this is when I was like, and Neville would have gotten on the mic and said, oh, if you have nobody to fight, then you have no job either, buddy. This is your last step. I guess yeah. that's true. And then, so, yeah, he, like you said, he runs down everybody. Yeah. It was pretty good. I, I'll t- I must say, <clears throat> he is very good. Yeah, he's good, but he's very annoying, too. It's true. And he looks like he shopped the clearance bin at Marshall's. Well, you know. It's all designer wear, but it's the stuff that nobody wants. It's, it's, it's terrible fine. looking. It's, it's it's a look. Oh, it's the look. And he's from Jersey, so it's perfect. It's true. Um, so, yeah, Kurt Angle comes out, and he, you know, says, what did he say, that none of the yeah, clothes no. are enforced for the newest member of 205 Live. Yeah, this was terrible. And it only took 11 months, I believe it was, no, Kalista's only been on a row for a few months. 
No, but I mean introducing him into the cruiserweight division. Okay. Regardless. I guess that's true. But yes, it was Kalisto, and I am so happy. I never have to see Kalisto wrestle Elias Samson. You're a liar. It could happen. It could. Yeah. But just let me have some hope no. here. No. I, I, Next I week, I guarantee it. Next week, guarantee it. She's going to get thrown in a dumpster by Braun Strowman. <laughs> like, like, that was the stupidest thing. Oh, well, we're going to build up Braun Strowman. Let, let's put him in a match against Kalisto. No, that's not <laughs> how you do things. <laughs> Oh, so first we want it. We want the Cruiserweights to integrate with the the main roster, and now we don't want that. Only Kalisto. Only Kalisto. I, okay. I don't because <sighs> he's the only one who actually makes sense to be a cruiserweight. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else seems like they could break that. No, barrier. it's just the way they've booked him. I mean, it was terrible when him and Ryback had all those matches. Yeah, I guess, but that him it was and kind of Corbin. A little bit too. It was all crap. It, yeah, it's true. It was all crap. And I mean It was a chairs match. Look, it, I'm I'm the same size as Kalisto. It's like you know, it's just like just yeah. put me in my place. I, I understand this. <laughs> I understand this. I'm not Austin Aries. I wasn't in other promotions and was their world champion. Yeah. And I got nothing against Kalisto because he's fantastic in the ring. It's it just true. the booking was so poor. Yeah, it does they do put him in a lot of situations that don't make any sense. <sighs> It's like, oh, we don't have anybody else. Damn it, throw out Kalisto. He's back there somewhere. <laughs> All right. I anyway. locked him in the trunk. Here's the key. <laughs> anyway. All right. So uh, Kalisto goes down, and he hits uh, hits a Salida de Sol, Sol. Yeah. On, uh, on Enzo, mm-hmm. and that was it. Yep. Um, so at this point, we kind of just assumed that the that the show was over mm-hmm. um, but they cut to Roman sitting in the in uh, the locker room looking very uh distraught and yes. in pain um slowly Dean comes over and then Seth comes over they kind of the, look and nod at Roman and they walk off yep that was a good ending it's true it was it, a very good ending they didn't have to explain anything mm-hmm. but at the same don't worry time, next week they will well yeah but the audience <laughs> knows what's going on that's true so it's it's good yeah I good definitely thought it was a good way to end the show. the show. And like we said, it was a solid show overall. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Right. Which is what should happen considering the pay-per-view was just, what, two weeks two ago. Weeks ago. It's true. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that was our Raw review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.